Hello and welcome back to uh, Digital Games Design uh, Puzzle Tutorials. Uh, the last tutorial we basically uh, set up our sprites. We also um, created the objects for these. So everything now is set up for this tutorial. Uh, so this tutorial basically we're going to get the character moving around, um, get it aligned to the grid, etc. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our object player. Uh, as you can see on here we've got events. Now events are basically um, things where th things happen, actions. Uh, so if we look at some of these events you can see that you've got uh, key presses, collisions, etc. So what we're going to go for initially is we're going to go to key down uh, and we're going to go for down. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter, I know this is a down sprite, but it doesn't matter because we're going to set all these things in here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the key to go in a specific direction. So when we press the down key, this uh, sprite is going to move down. Okay, a uh, little tip for you uh, as regards to the interface. If you want to make a bit more room, you can sort of click on this one here, which will move that in, give you some more room. And you can also use this one, which will minimize everything. So you've just got this window, uh, which is quite nice when you're working with this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a set direction. Uh, if you look on here, all these drag and drop features are all in their own little category. So set direction is in movement. Okay, well you can also search for it up here and then you've got the recently used ones as well here as well. Okay, so I'm just going to grab one from here. So we're going to set direction and we're going to go down. Okay, so I just click on that and that's going to basically, when we press that key, it's going to move in that direction. Okay. Um, what we're also going to do is we're going to set the speed of this. Okay, so again, that will be down here somewhere. You can search for it. But it's basically set speed. Okay. Uh, and what this will do, this will set the speed of direction. Okay, which is basically this way. So it's going down, direction going down, setting the speed to, let's try, 8. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a sprite because how we're going to do this is every time we press a key we're going to play one of the different animations so we've got one for up, down, left and right. Uh, I also have a pushing animation that you can use to push when pushing a box but we're not going to use that one uh, in this particular tutorial. Okay, so... Um, so right, so what we're going to do then is we're going to get the sprite. Okay, so set sprite we want. Uh, that is already there. But again, that's down here in the instances. So I'm just going to drag that in. Okay, and we're going to actually choose our animation. And that was going to be our down one, which is here. Okay. And we're going to start at frame zero. Okay, what that relates to is if we look at our sprite down, the actual sprite, you can see you've got this little animation sequence here. If I just play that, you can see it's walking uh, animation. And um, frame zero is basically this one. So it's going to start now and play through the sequence. Okay. And so if we just go back to this one. Um, Right, so we've got our sprite, it's at frame 1. Now I want to set uh, the image speed. Okay, so I'm going to assign a variable for this one. Now, all a variable is, is basically something that stores a value of some sort that we can change. Now, GameMaker has quite a lot of fixed variables in here. Uh, and we're basically going to use one of those. Uh, 
so if I just go to image underscore speed okay you can see that's there sorry I meant built in variable not fixed variable uh, so basically there's lots of different variables that do different things and what this one does is it basically uh, sets the speed at which that animation is going to play okay and we're going to set this to something like 0.4 just to um, see how we get on alright so that should be it so if I play this now and I press the down arrow key, down arrow key that should move down okay you can see that the animation automatically starts here which isn't good because obviously it's, it's playing when we're not moving so that's something we need to fix um, so if I go down and you can also see that I press the key and it just basically keeps on going it doesn't stop okay now the reason for that is that basically we're setting the direction we're giving it speed and it's just going basically it's not going to stop all right so we want to change that so that it does actually stop uh, so there's lots of ways we can do this uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the begin step uh, feature so we've got step here begin step okay and we're basically going to use the same things we've used in here more or less so i'm just going to copy all of those and then i'm going to paste them in here okay this time i'm going to set it to no direction so basically it's not going to go anywhere and i'm also going to set the speed to zero okay so it's not going to go anywhere i'm not going to change the sprite because whichever direction we're facing that's the sprite we're going to be using so we don't need that so that can go and also the image speed we're now going to set to zero okay so what that's going to do now is when we are not pressing the key it's going to perform this basically okay now a step will be performed whatever frame rate we're running I think we're running 30 frames per second if I just check in here you can see there frames per second 30 so that's basically what steps you're going to be doing so every uh, 30 times a second basically it's going to be performing this this operation all right so let's just see what happens right okay so you can see that the play is not moving so that's a good a good start and when i press the key it's actually now moving okay it still goes through all the blocks and it will go off the screen uh, but we've done what we need to do so far right so the next thing we want to do is basically duplicate these okay so copy those again and we want to do the other movements okay so if we go for key down again and this time we go for oh, paste that in there change the direction to up change the sprite to up you can see here as well because we've used our naming conventions it's very easy for us to find uh, the sprites we want okay so that's that's another good reason to use your naming conventions right so that's that one done now, now we're going to do another one we can do the left okay we go left oh actually I didn't actually change yeah I did change the animation so this time we're going to go for the left okay everything else stays the same and then finally we're going to go for right right and this one will now be right and that's it okay so we should now be able to move in all directions Yeah, which we can and when we release the key the player will stop okay which is pretty good now the one problem with this that we've got straight away is that it's not actually 
aligning to anything so we pretty much want this to be in the center when we're pushing the boxes so otherwise we push two boxes and things like that so what we want to do we want to snap this to the grid so that it basically it will do that okay so that's what we're going to do next now the, the best way I've found of doing this is to basically use the keel okay so if we use the keel so when the left key is off which basically means you've let go of the key what we want to do then is we want to snap to grid okay so there's your snap position there again that's down here in movement so you can take it from there snap position this here automatically defaults to 32 by 32 uh, but if we were using a bigger grid say 64 by 64 you would just change the values in here okay so that's the left and I'm just going to duplicate this for each one pretty much so we go for right in fact I'll just copy that key up right Okay, so if we play that now. Okay, we will see now that it will actually keep snapping to these grids. So we always get a nice line of where we're going to go. Okay, so that will help us when we're making more complicated puzzles uh, later on. Alright, so that's all well, that's done so um, there's a couple more things we need to do uh, interaction wise so for example we want to stop the player from going out of the area so when it hits a wall it stops we want the player to be able to push the boxes as well uh, and things like that Alright, well I think that's a good point to stop this particular tutorial and we'll cover all those points in the next one. So, uh, thanks for listening.